Well, hey there. I am really excited for this Monday Motivation, where I am joined by one of our students and adjunct professors, William Bowler. And so William not only is a student in our DBA program, our number one Forbes ranked DBA program, but he's especially a student in my class that just finished high performance leadership. And one of the culminating assignment options was to write a leadership mini book. I know many of you have heard me talk about this and William did that. He wrote this really cool leadership mini book. We'll put a link uh, in this email or however you're getting this video to the book. But I really wanted to have him join us and share a little bit about what he chose to write about and how it's informed his leadership. So hi, William. Hello. Hi. So yeah, Good tell here. us a little bit about what is the book about and why did you decide to write the, on this topic? Well, I decided to write on the topic because I've been using mindfulness now for about three decades. Um, and you'll, if, if, you, if you purchase the book, you, whether you, will, you will be able to read um, kind of my trials and tribulations as a child and what, what got me here. That's uh, right. Short... Tell them the title of the book is The Mindful Leader, A Four-Week Roadmap to Master OCD, Elevate Your Leadership, and Improve Your Life. That's it. That's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> It is. So um, as a child, I had uh, OCD. And as an adult, I still have OCD. Uh, but the difference is, uh, for the last three decades or so, I've been controlling it and mastering it through the use of uh, mindfulness and meditation. Uh, when, when I started using mindfulness, it wasn't called mindfulness. It was just called meditation, basically. Yep. Um, yep. So, so uh, that's why I went forward and, and, and decided to write the book. Uh, as I started looking into the literature, I found that mindfulness leadership was a big thing, still is a big thing, and uh, it's, it's becoming more and more of a big thing. And, and here's the thing about mindfulness. There's, there's good news and bad news about mindfulness. The, the good news is we're all born with it. If you have consciousness, if you're, if, if you're, uh, uh, if you're, uh, if you're awake, okay, and you're walking around and you're performing a job and you're, you have mindfulness, you may not know it, but you do. Uh, uh, but the bad news is everything that goes on in our lives uh, from cell phones to family matters to job uh, everything draws us away from our mindfulness so I like to think of mindfulness as a, as a uh, kind of a jug of milk that's been sitting in your refrigerator for the last 40 years and is spoiled and it's your job to wake it up yeah. and use it and use it to your advantage um, so we all have it all we have to do is wake it up and unspoil it so I speak. love that analogy. That's so great. <laughs> and so you used mindfulness techniques and strategies, not only to master OCD, but really improve your life and your leadership. And that's what 100%. you're doing today. And you're in our DBA program. So we know. Yes, yes 100%. I'm glad to be here as a, in the top ranked DBA program. And that, that actually got, yeah, that actually got the, uh, the notification uh, and the accolades when I, right after I had uh, kind of got into the program. So I'm really, really glad to be here. Well, um, I'm sure it's because you enrolled. That really helped a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, did. okay. Uh, so so in, in the book, in the book, I give you some uh, uh, some of my childhood, right? And I, and I tell you how I got to where I'm at, okay? It's, 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 a, it's a bit of a tearjerker. There were some trials and tribulations and some trauma as, as a child uh, that brought on the OCD. Um, and uh, having OCD, I... Uh, I almost didn't make it into college because when I got into college uh, and was accepted, uh, we went through what, what was called a, uh, a, a trial period. It's, it's like a week of, uh, of, of tests and where they're going to place you and what classes and that sort of thing. And I was reading on a fourth grade reading level, and that was not acceptable. And the reason that was happening is because when I was reading in, in high school, I could only read the first sentence of every paragraph. If you know anything about OCD, it's, uh, it's called obsessive compulsive because you have obsessive thoughts. Then you have these ritualistic compulsions that come along with that to relieve the stress of your obsessions. Okay. So my obsession was death and loss through fire. How it got there, I don't know, but that's what I, that's what I focused on. And so my, 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 my whole ritual was I had to read the first uh, sentence of every paragraph at least four times. But the more stressed out you get, you, you, you read it four times and then you read four times four and then it's four times four times four. My point is, is you can get stuck in a loop and start what I call spiraling. Um, and, th and that's where um, uh, I had to learn when, when, I, when I went to remedial reading, which was entirely embarrassing. And I tell you, I, when I got the letter, I, if last year was, was the first time I mentioned it to my parents and I never told my father. 
Right. Last so, year, isn't that amazing how we carry these things with us? Oh, yeah. wow. it, it was, I, I, but after that, I forgot it because uh, it's it's really a reminder of the past and a reminder of uh, how it, it, it's good because it reminded me where I'm at, but it's bad because it was it was really I had to clear the air, right? So in the book, I go through five step four week process. And the first step is to surrender. Okay, when I surrendered to OCD, I did it involuntarily. I got sick and tired of it. I was, sit I was sitting alone in my apartment. I just screamed at the top of my lungs. And you'll read that in the book. I'm done with you. I'm through with you. You win. Just do what you want to do. And I expected my what I call my OCD mantra to take over at that time. And he didn't. It's really wow. weird. It's like when, when, when I gave no resistance, neither did he, right? What so, a turning uh, point. I remember that. It was like such a turning point because you're like, where's this going to go? Which way? And then it was like, wow. Yeah, it just relieved a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. And at the same time, I was seeing a psychologist through through the college. And I actually saw that psychologist all four years. So uh, he helped me tremendously because he would give me little assignments to go, to go take a look at meditative techniques and relaxation techniques, et cetera. Some of the stuff I, I go over in the book. Um, step two and step, step two through five are week-long processes each, okay? And I do that because it's an introduction. Now, after you learn this stuff, you can do whatever, whatever you want to with it. You know, whatever feels best for you, pick and choose, right? And the other thing is, is, is this book isn't only for people with OCD. Once you learn relaxation and mindfulness and visualization, you can use these in any part of your life. Yeah. It's incredible the changes that, 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 it, that it can make. The reason why, I, why I, I, I kind of bent it toward OCD was because I wanted to demonstrate how powerful mindfulness is. I never took one psychotropic medication when I, when I had OCD, and I had it really bad. Okay, so um, uh, that's how powerful mindfulness is. That's why I put these steps in the, in the book. Well, I love it because sure. this is like a hands-on guide. I thought the same thing when I was reading it. First of all, you have to get this book because the way William tells you this story, you will immediately be drawn in. And there's such a credibility to it because it's like people know, wow, you've been there. But also like I can take away so much from it too, even though maybe I can't relate to the OCD part too much, who knows? But also it's like, wow, these, these work. If this can work in the most difficult and intense of circumstances, this can work in any leadership or life Apparel. So I really appreciate it. And it's so applied. That's what's so great is this isn't some long book on theory. It's a very short and sweet mini guidebook. And I hear you're working on a companion journal for it too, which is I am. Cool. I am. I yeah, am. Yes, so I am. This, this is thing's, this so thing's great. Going. Yeah. And and so uh, um, mindfulness within itself is when you when you define the word mindfulness, if you ask 100 people, maybe 10 of those may know what it is. And out of the 10, they're going to tell you something different. But mindfulness is, is, is just basically paying attention, being yeah. being aware of your present tense at mm -hmm. all time, right? And and having uh, ADHD or OCD is like having one of your therapy dogs with you. I had, I had a friend when I was in college that had a therapy dog. And anytime he would be close to, to, a, to, to a seizure, the therapy dog would put his paw on, his, on, 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 on Jack's knee. And so Jack could then take the preemptive steps he needed to take uh, to to uh, get himself to a safe place and to squelch what was going to happen to him, right? So uh, uh, having mindfulness is like having that little uh, uh, dog in your head, that, that that little friend that lets you know when things are going to start spiraling, and that that is where the magic is. I uh, my spouse is extremely understanding, and there are times when I get very stressed out. I I'm, I'm having trouble. I'm I'm checking the stove. I know immediately when I'm going to start to spiral. So I go to my wife and I go, do me a favor. I'm going to step outside. Can you please check the stove and then tell me, come out, tell me it's okay. Oh. And so that's what she does. And so she comes out, she says, it's, it's fine. It's off. It's, you're, you're, you're good to go. Um, that's what mindfulness does for you. It doesn't cure your OCD. It helps you control your OCD and it, or, or ADHD. And if you want to use it to, for, for, for your leadership, yeah. go for it. It does nothing but, but, uh, but, but increases your leadership. I mean, you're so right, because how many of us could use better focus and to be present, myself included in meetings when there's emails and there's texts and there's all sorts of things you're thinking about on your to-do list. This really helps you develop that mindfulness acuity. So 
William, I'm so excited for you. We'll put a link. I highly recommend this book. It's extremely readable and to gift it as well, because you may know folks that struggle with this or who could benefit from this. And it just makes a great gift. So thank you for joining us on our Monday morning motivation. I think we need to change it to Mindfulness Monday. I like that even better. Mindfulness Monday motivation. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Dr. Siegel.